before him, mind's limiting firmament ceased above. Well, it is true that the mind has great limitations, and Sri Aurobindo covers this in great depth in his work. The word firmament simply means the vault or the expanse of heavens or the sky. So that firmament is no longer applicable to Ashwapati because it's a limiting thing and he is no longer limited. In the griffin forefront of the night and day, and I have to go a little slowly here because some of these words are a little challenging. <clears throat> we know a griffin as a beast with the head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. That's a griffin. A forefront, of course, is the foremost part, the position of the greatest importance. So he is there in this griffin forefront of the night and day. And we can see how beautifully Sri Aurobindo puts this griffin idea along with night and day. Hello. So it's it's fantastic line. In the griffin forefront of the night and day, a gap was rent in the all-concealing vault. Again here, to rend something, this is past tense, rent, torn apart, ripped apart. So this gap in the all-concealing vault, that chamber, wherever that is, that he is in at that moment was, and it's all concealing, it conceals everything, but it was torn apart by Ashwapati. And the conscious ends of being went rolling back. The landmarks of the little person fell. So we see that um, a landmark is usually defined um, as a prominent identifying feature. So we can say that there's a landmark, the banyan tree is the landmark of the geographical center of Oroville, and the Matrimandir is the landmark of the spiritual center of Oroville. So, that's the landmarks, but here he's talking about the landmarks of the person who lives in ignorance. The person who lives in body, life, and mind. And therefore the conscious ends of his being went rolling back, as if something just unrolled, and now he's open and the last line where we have a full stop is so beautiful. The island ego joined its continent. Oh my gosh. So the island ego. So we first have, we have the landmarks, then we have the island ego. And certainly the ego is an island surrounded by infinity. So Sri Aurobindo is going to continue on now, uh, speaking about this great opening of Ashwapati. He's going to tell us that overpassed was this world of rigid, limiting forms. Now, for me, this is a very important line in my life. Because many times we are set upon, accused, condemned, criticized, spoken harshly to. So 
our world where we see everything as forms because it's an empiric world for us. We don't see the etheric areas that, that science doesn't even accept as yet, the ether. So we see these small things, this world of rigid limiting forms. One time when I was being severely criticized for taking the help of a lady from Mumbai, very wealthy lady, very generous lady, when Shamsundar couldn't come up with 500 rupees a month for my 12 boys working there. And she gave me this money. And they came down pretty hard on me. It should have been given to the central fund. We know how to use it. And I said, what about these children working for me? Uh, from the ages of maybe 12, 13, up to 19 or 20. And there are a few of them, or three or four of them have already passed away. Yeah. So what came to me was never judge another person until you can see their soul. And when you can see their soul, there'll be no reason to judge. So life's barriers opened into the unknown. And there is this truth which is imperceptible to the outer consciousness. If we could truly see, these barriers of life would open into the new and the unknown. And he capitalizes unknown very carefully because the unknown, I've talked to you about that before, the unknown can be the known, as well as the impossible is the symbol of things that are possible and realized in the future. Nothing is impossible. In fact, Sri Aurobindo says anything that has existed in this life will never go out of existence. And the Akashic Records prove that. So now we have these covenants, covenants, these binding agreements, and these conceptions, these ideas conceived in the mind. Abolished were conceptions, covenants, and striking off subjections, rigorous clause, and now we have three lines, three words here in one sentence. So we have a subjection, that's a concept or a plan or a design or an idea, whatever, but it's conceived in the mind. Rigorous, harsh, strict, severe. And a clause, of course, is a distinct article or stipulation or provision in some kind of document. So in one line he gives us striking off subjections, rigorous clause. And we can see how powerful that clause was. So powerful that he, only he could strike it off. Doesn't exist for him anymore. Annulled the soul's treaty with nature's Nations. And this is very important because annulled here is something that is made void. You annul something, you make it void, you abolish it, cancel it. Now, nations, Sri Aurobindo tells us in The Life Divine, nations in nature is the complete self-ignorance. So we have in conscience, and then we have nations, and he capitalizes nature again, because nature, he tells us, 
is the complete self-ignorance also, nescience in nature. So this needs a little explanation. Nature is Prakriti, Shigaya, the divine uh, creatrix. But from the heights that she's descended from the supermind, she narrows herself to get down into the earth nature. And there is when the nescience comes. And so nature has to try to, <clears throat> her work is always creation at the same moment as destruction. Interesting. Because she's trying to create something greater. And therefore other things that are lesser have to be destroyed. So we'll continue on. All the gray inhibitions were torn off. Well, gray here is more in the sense of dull or dreary or even monotonous, something without any light in it or very little light because he, he uses the word gray, gray inhibitions, not dark or black, but just gray. And we understand what gray is. All the gray inhibitions were torn off and broken the intellect's hard and lustrous lid. Well, we know that Nolini has told us that the mind is an ivory tower. Yes, it has a lustrous lid, but it's unable to break that hard and lustrous lid. And so on a disciple's birthday, if I can remember it, Sri Aurobindo wrote to him, <clears throat> there is a veil behind the heart, behind the heart, a lid over the mind. Love and devotion rend the veil and in the quietude of the mind the lid thins and vanishes and that's what we see here the intellect's hard and lustrous lid has been rent torn apart the gray inhibitions torn off and therefore he has a semicolon after the word lid and he says truth unpartitioned found immense sky room ah so there's no more partitioning of this is true this is false this is good this is bad he sees everything with this vast vision nothing is divided nothing is sectioned off and what does he tell us next after that semicolon an empyrean vision found immense sky room. Empyrean here, it can be defined as heavenly. It was often referred to the highest heaven by the ancients, which contained the pure element of fire. So an empyrean vision saw and knew the bounded mind became a boundless light. How beautiful. When this mind of ours is so bounded, we can't hold thousands of things at once at the same time. We have to leap from point to point to point. Now, not with Ashrapati, not with Sri Aurobindo, the bounded mind became a boundless light. 
no boundaries, no more limits. The finite self mated with infinity. Um, mated here is the sense of married, wedded, got wedded with infinity, joined with infinity. And now we see the next four lines, extraordinary. His march now soared into an eagle's flight out of apprenticeship to ignorance wisdom upraised him to her master craft and made him the archmason of the soul a builder of the immortal secret house an aspirant to supernal timelessness let's go through that for a bit because it's so important We all go through an apprenticeship to ignorance. And as we grow, we begin to learn more and more things. Our mind does expand. Our heart does expand. We are able to not only conceive of love, but in many instances to be love. So out of apprenticeship to ignorance, wisdom upraised him to her mastercraft. Now, mastercraft is one who is eminently skilled in something, a master craftsman, perhaps in carpentry or the like. A skilled artisan. Hmm? A skilled artisan. Skilled artisan, is it like that? Uh, an artisan, yes, it would be an artisan, artisan. yes, artisan. definitely. And wisdom upraising him to her master craft, and look what her master craft is here something so extraordinary that it makes him an archmason of the soul. An archmason is generally considered a master builder. We've had great archmasons in the world. Look at the architecture of the world. Look at the sculpture of the world. Uh, archmason is often spelled with a hyphen, but Sri Aurobindo uses the full word. So wisdom, using her master craft, has made Ashwapati a master builder, a builder of the immortal's secret house. So you see now we, we see the connection from apprenticeship in ignorance to, to ignorance, wisdom raising him up to her master craft, making him a master builder of the soul, and a builder of the immortal's secret house. Note the capital I in immortal. And what is the secret house? Is it the soul, the supermind? Perhaps not yet, because he is still an aspirant to timelessness. Only in Book 1, Canto 5 are we going to see where all the realization pours into him, and he is no more um, a novice or a neophyte. An aspirant to supernal timelessness. Supernal generally is synonymous with heavenly. Heavenly timelessness. Super freedom and empire call to him from on high. Above mind's twilight and life's star-led night, there gleamed the dawn of a spiritual day. So important. He's taking us back now to Book 1, Canto 1. 
when the dawn is just beginning to come. But in him now is this dawn. In a human being. So he's an aspirant to supernal timelessness. Calling him from on high is freedom and empire. And all of this is far above the mind's twilight, he calls it. Uh, in other lines, he uses the word half-light, which is, and Yeats uses half-light quite often also, the light and the half-light. So above mind's twilight and this star-led night of life, we're sort of, well, uh, B was talking about it today. There's astrology. And many people are led very clearly by astrology. So there's a gleam now of this dawn of a spiritual day, but it's just a gleam still. It's just a gleam of the, of the dawn. So now I have to go to uh, another page. As so he grew into his larger self, humanity framed his movements less and less. He does not forget humanity because he is the seer. If we go deeper, we know that it's Sri Aurobindo. But humanity is not framing his movements. He's beyond all of this. We've heard so many lines telling us how far he's advanced. So the next line after the semicolon, a greater being saw a greater world. And this is what we're looking forward to in our present human existence. We see all the suffering that's going on in humanity and we're calling to Mother for this greater world to come down sooner rather than later. A fearless will for knowledge dared to erase the lines of safety, reason draws, that bar mind soar, souls dive into the infinite. Well, Sri Aurobindo talks a great deal about reason. That uh, it doesn't have a place in the spiritual life. Reason is always weighing things, evaluating things. But Ashwapati has a fearless will for knowledge. And he even dares to erase the lines of safety that are drawn by reason as a bar. A bar means to something that obstructs, prevents, hinders, impedes. So what is that bar? Well, it, it bars many things, but especially it bars minds soar and souls dive into the infinite. So that's the problem with reason. It's so limited. Even his first steps broke our small earth bounds and loitered in a freer, in a vaster, freer air. Well, this is an interesting word, loitered. When we use a word loiter, uh, it usually means hangs around or lingers aimlessly, but not for Sri Aurobindo, because he's, he's sort of 
I feel um, telling us that one has entered a space that has never been entered before. And one could loiter there for a while, standing idly in this new and magical place. And I think I'll end there. Oh, 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 oh,